In ancient Greek, the language of John's Gospel, Jesus' last word on the cross is tetelestai. Tetelestai. In English, it is finished. It is a crucial word because it signifies a successful end to a particular <coughs> course of action. It's the word you would use when you reach the peak of Mount Everest. It's the word you would use when you turn in the final copy of your dissertation. It's the word you would use when you pay off your mortgage. It's the word you use when you cross the finish line of your first 10K run. The word means more than coming to an end. It means accomplishing your goal, doing exactly what you set out to do. Tetelestai. It is finished. We are reminded of how it all began. In the beginning, there was creation, then rebellion, rejection, banishment, and separation. Then God began the process of redemption with promises and prophecies. And as he kept his promises and fulfilled his prophecies, his son became one of us. John the Evangelist reveals to us the ways in which God speaks to the world through Jesus, who communicates the will of his Father by the words he speaks, the miracles he performs, the people he associates with, the death he dies in love for others, and his rising to new life. In the prologue to John's Gospel, the Word was in the beginning, the Word that is with God and is God, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. This hymn of praise echoes Jesus' death on the cross and his mission. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Tonight, you and I and a billion members of the body of Christ are united in a humbling, painful, and sorrowful surrender of our brokenness to God's mercy. As this day unfolded 2,000 years ago, Jesus was betrayed, abandoned, handed over, tried, insulted, beaten, and then crucified, nailed to a cross and hung there to die in the heat of the afternoon, naked and practically alone doesn't make sense that salvation came to us in this way. For the assembled crowd, it was just another Friday afternoon execution, almost routine for the Roman soldiers, whose job it was to enforce the cruelties of the justice system of the ancient world. But Jesus' death was of such profound consequence that the sky went dark over Jerusalem and the earth trembled. Even in remembrance, the darkness is so heavy and troubling that we are driven to our knees as if under the weight of the same cross that Jesus carried to his death. John grasps the irony that characterizes the kingdom of heaven, and he wants us to see that even in the pain and suffering of the cross, there is a reason the Friday of Jesus' death is called good, counterintuitive as that may seem. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' life does not end in defeat or disgrace, but in glory. He isn't crucified, he is lifted up. He does not die, he gives up his spirit. Instead of a shameful and brutal death, there is the promise of eternal life in paradise. The cross doesn't represent loss, but victory. And Jesus' final words are not an admission of failure, but a declaration of triumph. It is finished. It is accomplished. Tetelestai. On the cross, Jesus knew the same despair as anyone who has ever felt the absence of God in a time of deep need. Certainly, there was the trauma of recent events, his traitorous arrest, the false charges, the abuse of soldiers and brutal physical torture. 
Compounding this torment was his disappointment in the disciples, his own mother's anguish and his concern for the beloved apostle. The Jewish authorities, in their blindness, proclaimed a truth they did not believe. This is the king of the Jews. The title is meant as mockery, but it states a holy shining truth. This is Jesus' defining moment, his enthronement and exaltation, when his long prophesied kingship is fulfilled and proclaimed. The thorns atop Jesus' head mark his crowning glory and the arrival of God's kingdom. No one has ever seen God, yet he is recognizable in his Son, Jesus Christ. And it is God's only Son, who is close to his Father's heart, who makes him known. Meeting God face to face is just too shocking for any mere mortal to bear. He is too holy, too powerful, too infinite, too bright, too loving, too forgiving, too full of glory. Jesus gave his all for all people in all time, for the hungry and the outcasts and those who grieve, for the elderly and disabled, for the lonely and the dying, for all those who are taken advantage of simply because it's possible, and most assuredly for the poor. But Jesus hangs on the cross for one reason and one reason only, to show us God to show us God's grace and mercy, to show us just how much God loves us and how far he is willing to go to communicate that love to us. Today we look to Christ in his finishing, in his loving and giving until all is completed. And we look to our unfinished selves, to those things done and left undone our unrealized intentions and undeveloped potential, our unspoken words of thanks and praise and unsaid prayers, our conditional charity and unforgiven wounds, our lack of hope and our undisciplined faith. The Son of God lived and died as one of us. He preached God's mercy and taught God's love. He healed the sick and broken and conquered death itself. Fix your mind's eye on Jesus lifted up on the cross and ponder what you see. This is who and what God is. True God from true God. Love, perfect love, for us and for all creation. A love so powerful that it carries us, carries us into eternity. On this day 2,000 years ago, a day we call good, the Word incarnate drew each of us in all our incompleteness to himself and spoke the final word. He spoke to us of love, in word and deed, across galaxies and ages of time, and through the prophets and sages of Scripture. He spoke love in handing himself over, in giving himself up, and in pouring himself out until there was nothing left but to surrender to the will of God and declare his mission accomplished, our redemption secured. It was over. It is finished. Tetelestai.